the European Union should tighten its border controls for people departing the Schengen zone in order to stanch the flow of foreign fighters heading to Syria via Turkey, Turkey's foreign minister has said. Everybody agrees on the need for intelligence sharing and better cooperation on foreign fighters. We have good cooperation with the US and some EU countries. We maintain case-by-case -case cooperation with some countries, but with many others, we carry out regular intelligence sharing, Mevlut Avulu said in Krakow during events marking the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. Avulu said he attended an anti-Islamic state of Syria and the Levant, ISIL, meeting in London on January 22 where he shared his views about ineffective cooperation and the lack of strategy to stop the flow of foreign fighters to Syria. However, intelligence sharing alone is not sufficient to stop the foreign fighters, he said, citing cases of foreign fighters who were deported by the Turkish government only to later appear at the Turkish border again. Checking passports and measures taken at their airports are not sufficient. We have good cooperation with the EU as an institution, but its institutional decisions are not enough. Member states should take additional measures, he said. EU countries part of the Schengen Agreement and non-EU countries where the Schengen area is valid should re-regulate passport control policies, Avulu said, noting that the exit and entry of every single traveller should be computerized. Meanwhile, the Turkish Foreign Minister said Ankara and Washington were in negotiations on the use of the strategic Nsirlik base as part of a deal to train and equip the moderate Syrian opposition. He urged Washington to finalize the agreement through accelerated political talks. Talks with the U.S. include discussions about how many members of the Syrian opposition will be trained, where they will be trained and how the consultations will be carried out. Plus, will it include Nsirlik base or not? Is there a need to use Nsirlik, he said. Turkey and the U.S. have been negotiating over the modalities of a train and equip program to be pledged to moderate Syrian opposition groups with the objective of creating an effective ground force, both against the Bashar al-Assad regime and ISIL. There were expectations that the agreement would be finalized before the end of January, but Avula complained about the slow pace of the talks. Talks for the train and equip program are continuing. We told the Americans that talks should be held at a political level afterward because the soldiers participating in the talks continuously seek political consent on the decisions made. We told them the talks were not proceeding at the requested speed, he said. Instead of seeking political consent on every issue, it would be more effective to include political figures in the ongoing negotiations, the minister said, underlining that there were no problems concerning the content of the talks so far. Avulu said he conveyed this message to Vice President Joe Biden, who said he would first seek President Barack Obama's approval to include political figures in the talks. Cobain victory should not be exaggerated. Another Syria-related issue is the recent liberation of Cobain, a northern town in Syria near the Turkish border. However, Avulu said there is no need to exaggerate the victory of the Kurdish forces in Cobain against ISIL, underlining that control of the town could change hands from one group to another in the absence of a political settlement in Syria. In the absence of a permanent political settlement and of stability and peace, today one group, the other day another group could control Cobain. We have to fight against this efficiently. Turkey's position is clear on this issue, he said, adding that Ankara was closely following developments in Cobain. Avula criticized other countries for not assuming responsibility on the Syrian crisis, as he did at the London meeting on January 22. Unfortunately, many countries are not taking responsibility, neither on the struggle against terror, nor bringing a political solution to Syria, he said. No evidence that Somalia attack was against Turkey. Avulu also rejected claims that the last attack in Somalia by extremist Al Shabab at a hotel, in which some of the members of the Turkish presidential delegation were present, specifically targeted Turkey, because Somalis were also present at the time. There is no evidence or statement that the attack was carried against Turkey. It's not certain for what reason they attacked the hotel, he said. There has been no increase in hostility against Turkey in Somalia and Ankara has been providing humanitarian assistance to Somalia, 
including building schools, hospitals, and the only main road in the capital of Mogadishu, said Ibulu. When asked about media claims that a third country could be involved in the Somalia attack, the minister said he could not say if the allegations were true, adding that the reason for the attack was not yet certain. Turkey not taking sides in Libya Abulu also responded to claims that Turkey was siding with the Tripoli government, deemed to be close to the Muslim Brotherhood, in the ongoing unrest in the North African country. What we want in Libya is a truce and the immediate start of talks. A national unity government should be formed and should work with the UN. This is the message we are delivering to both sides. We are not taking any sides in Libya, Abulu said. Criticizing outside interventions in Libya and particularly Gen. Khalifa Haftar for violating the ceasefire, he said Ankara wants the unity of Libya. If there is anyone who is against this, they are against Turkey. The UN appreciates Turkey. The role Turkey is trying to play is very important for the future of Libya, he added.